Welcome back to the Prepare Like a Pro live chat Sunday show. My name is Jack McLean. I'm the host, and today I'll be debriefing last week's live interviews with Tim Parham and Cameron Falloon. Tim is the head physiotherapist at the Adelaide Football Club. He's worked at GWS Giants, Port Adelaide, Arsenal, and now he's head physio at Adelaide Football Club. So really enjoyed our chat with him, and I'll debrief some of the details and what you can expect um, from that chat. Cam Falloon has worked at Geelong Football Club as rehabilitation coordinator. He then managed the Western Bulldogs program and then worked at uh, Port Adelaide Football Club as the physical performance manager as well. Soon after finishing up in elite sport, he just created the company Body Fit Training. He's now co-CEO and we discuss all things around elite sport from a strength and conditioning point of view development uh, from an athletic point of view as well as business um, and how he came to the idea of creating body fit training so both great chats and highly recommend if you miss the live uh, episodes to watch them on our youtube channel uh, prepare like a pro where you can watch the whole episode and recording we'll post the podcast recording shortly um, some point in december and definitely we'll let you know on our instagram on the exact date of that launch. We also have two new interviews coming up for this week. We have Matt Matthew McGregor, who I was lucky enough to work with at the Hawthorne Football Club. He's a sports psychologist um, and he was the sports psych at Hawthorne. He's just recently finished up. He's working at the AFL Player Association as a sports psych uh, and currently doing his own business as well. So looking forward to catching up with Matt on Tuesday, they'll be at 8.30 p.m. And um, we'll be discussing all things around his life story, his career, um, and why he has a strong passion for mental health and, and also um, mental preparation from a performance point of view. And then we're catching up with Rebecca Alcock, uh, who's just recently finished up at the Melbourne Football Club, where she was performance dietitian, uh, obviously the premiers, so really looking forward to um her work that she did at Melbourne. She's also completed a PhD in nutrition um, and she's now back working in research and um, doing a little bit of work in the clinic as well privately. So really looking forward to catching up with Beck. That'll be at Thursday at 8.30 p.m. for those that want to tune in live. Both All our live chats are on uh, YouTube so you can catch us there and um, we'll, you can watch the whole live chat as well as engage in our live chats, we like to keep them authentic and dynamic so the um, fans can get involved, listeners can get involved and send through your questions and um, I'll make sure I fit them in. In terms of the upcoming uh, podcast episodes, we have uh, Michael Riscatelli who played for the Gold Coast Suns and Brisbane Lions. That will be released on Tuesday. Our Get Better Plan um, episode will be on Wednesday. Um, and that will be revolved around recovery. And then Tim Schmidt is our Thursday, uh, Friday, sorry, podcast. So he created Kicking Dynamics. He also also is a former Sydney um, player, Sydney Swans player. So really looking forward to catching it, um, listening into Tim's podcast episode. Both Tim and Michael were great episodes for developing footballers that want to um, work on their craft, work on their uh, ability to develop as a as a footballer. Maybe you have dreams to be an AFL player or you just simply want to play at the highest level. Both these guys have done it. Both are working now with athletes um, from a professional point of view. Michael in helping athletes transition from a um, professional sportsman to the work life and Tim with kicking technique and biomechanics. So um, make sure to tune into those ones. Whether you're a businessman looking to start a business, you'll get something out of it, As and more specifically for the athletes that are tuned in and, and keen to work on your game, you'll definitely get a lot out of both those guys' uh, life stories. We have um, the power tip for this week is for those coaches out there that are creating an online business. I recently presented at the ASCA conference and uh, it was around a topic that I'm really passionate about, which is why strength and conditioning coaches should create your own job keeper. I, um, yeah, I've created a presentation that's specifically around um, marketing and sales, and as well as the importance of um, 
your operations. So breaking those three big rocks down for the, from a business point of view. So for those that do have a small business or are a company that you've just started, um, there's some hopefully some takeaways some things that have helped me and I've had a steep learning curve. Um, I was all new to social media as of two years ago and it's something now that I'm, um, is being an online business, Prepare Like a Private, something that we're um, working on uh, and have a consistent schedule that works for us and it's quite effective. And a lot of the presentation is about um, the mistakes I made early days focused so much on the social media side of things rather than searchable content. And I break down the importance of why searchable content is critical for your business in, in find, work, being seen, basically, um, with potential new prospects for people that want to work with you um, or for people that just want to read your content. Um, the searchable content is is key. And when we're thinking searchable content compared to social, it's simply thinking around blog posts, so writing articles that uh, – has keywords in it specific to your niche. Um, so you rank on Google. You're having, um, you might have some YouTube uh, videos, uh, short shorts, or either just some longer version uh, videos. So they're great for um, integrating with your Google. So you might add a video relevant to your blog post to make it even more um, optimized. And then uh, a podcast is also another great way. So audio content and video content um, and then you might have a description or a, um, a written description from the podcast and that's a, a great way so all three of those types forms of content are searchable and they're basically looking after the future of the business so at any point from now tomorrow a week's time month's time five years time people will still be able to search for those um, for that content that you've created and therefore it's looking after the future of your business it's giving back uh, for as long as your business is essentially um, alive and as long as that content is um, still published. Whereas with social media, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, um, these things are integrated with Google. And as soon as you post it, it will be seen for a couple of hours and then it's pretty much old news. So it's, it's, it, it is important. It definitely has relevance and you, you're probably going to use social media to promote your blog post, your podcast and your new YouTube episode but it doesn't give back like searchable content does. And, you know, the next day it's not like people are going to search for it and it's going to pop up in their feed uh, on Google or Yahoo or any of the search engine. Um, so that's that's where you want to start to shift. That's something that I've sort of worked out the last sort of six months and, and definitely have noticed um, great results with doing that uh, and have found I've been able to help more people, whether it be from a training point of view or just simply through an education point of view because they're able to find our content uh, through Google. So I hope that helps for the online coaches. In terms of uh, blog posts, on that note, we have recently just published a blog post, Why Footballers Should Work with a Strength and Edition Coach and Not a Personal Trainer. Um, this is something that he, I've been both a personal trainer, that's where I started, and then I'm now a Strength and Edition Coach. And there is a big difference uh, for athletes. And the main reasons are around knowing the sport. So a Strength and Edition Coach, We'll have a good understanding on how to break down the sport and the demands of the sport from a, a you know volume point of view. So if it's running based, um, they're better to see what type of running typically that player will will do. Are they more of a speed dynamic player? Are they more um, a hard running player? So preparing them to play um, their best version of their game and being able to prepare themselves from a physical resilience point of view. So they're limiting their risk of soft tissue injuries, um, but also from a performance point of view. So they're feeling Fitness is not going to let them down on game day. Um, and then from a strength and, condition, strength and power point of view, being able to see the way they play, what's important for their role within the team and um, what are some key performance indicators that we want to try and focus on in the gym uh, is really, really important. And there will be some exercises that you'll select from a general point of view but also some specific ones potentially um, that will be good for that player from a medical point of view, maybe because they've had some previous injuries. Um, or it might be from more from a sports specific point of view. But in, in general, as a personal trainer, in my experience being a personal trainer, you'll, most of the qualifications are around your um, general preparation. So reducing your body fat, increasing your lean muscle mass. Um, the functionalities might be picking things up off the floor, 
um, squatting, um, but it's not specific to the demands of a particular sport necessarily. So the functionality of personal training specifically is we're helping humans just do human general um, activities, um, like I mentioned before. Whereas with sport, there's completely different demands with the nature of agility, jumping, and so forth. So um, being able to understand the demands of a big running session and how the gym needs to complement that big running session. Um, and then, you know, with the, the calendar year of a footballer and making sure that we're timing our run, so periodizing the program to suit where we're, the player is working hard at the right times and recovering hard at other times. So all these things uh, are, are fairly different. Uh, you definitely will have good personal trainers out there and it's not like all strength and conditioning coaches are going to be great but ultimately if you work if you're looking if you're if you're a parent or you're a, uh, a athlete and you're looking for someone and you're comparing a personal trainer to an addition coach that both are good eggs good people um i would recommend working with a transition coach because the degree and the experience of a transition coach will be more athlete specific than a than a personal trainer that's just in my opinion um, all right, guys, let's go to Instagram. We're going to answer a few questions and then we'll wrap up this week's episode. Okay, so we're now live streaming from our Instagram. Welcome to Prepare Like a Pro Live Chat Sunday show. Our first question that was sent in via Instagram direct message is from Kellen Lyle. Hey, guys, I'm in my early 20s and looking to get back into being as fit as I was before I had my bad hamstring injury. Um, I'm interested in face-to-face training but open to following a training program what would you recommend um yeah sorry to hear about your injury callum and uh hopefully you're you're feeling better you're on the men mate but um yeah certainly face-to-face training would be a good start if you're in depending on what stage you're in with your rehabilitation uh it can be quite handy to uh be face-to-face with someone so you can they can screen you particularly a physio will be an expert in this area to be able to get a good diagnosis um, to make sure that it definitely is a hamstring injury. Um, potentially, you've already been diagnosed um, and you already know that, but you want to make sure the severity is right, the grade of injuries is accurate, and then from there, you'll have a protocol that that physio would put in place. A strength and conditioning coach would typically get more involved and start to control more of the rehabilitation once you've returned to running and you're starting to get back to the um, compound movements in the gym. Um, so you might, if it's a typical hamstring, four weeks long, you may spend the first couple of weeks um, typically with a physio for the most part and then two weeks with the strength and conditioning coach. In terms of our programs, we've got an individualized coaching package that I would recommend um, because you get a coaching session once a month with that program and we've actually got a physiotherapist as part of our coaching team, Nalash Murdy, who um, has great experience working at GWS Giants for a number of years in the rehabilitation space. So he's strong with his physio skills but also has a good understanding of strength and conditioning uh, principles so he would probably be the main guy i would recommend in this circumstance uh, and the way the individualized coaching package works is he you see in lh once a month but also there's back and forth communication throughout the whole process so you can text message him message in the team builder app uh, have a call um, throughout the whole process and that way you've got someone in your corner that you can trust and you know understands the game and, and has had plenty of experience uh, helping footballers return to play from hamstring injury. In terms of your fitness goal, um, yeah, you're still young, mate, so you're definitely going to bounce back and get back to that peak shape of, well, like you mentioned, when you're 18, 19, um, so that won't be a problem at all. In terms of our training programs, like online, like you mentioned that you're open to, once you've fully rehabilitated that hamstring, and that might take four to sort of six weeks where you're feeling like you're back to where you were, um, that's certainly if you feel like the – you, the individualized program, you want to move more to the online program, then we've got our online strength and conditioning program and that would be suited to you. So it doesn't involve rehab, the online program. You'd have to be on our individualized coaching package. But once you're fully fit and able, then the online program would be a good fit from more performance point of view. So getting your strong power and getting your fitness back. Great question, Callum, though. Feel free to reach out if you have any more questions, mate. The next question is from Will Pearson. He says, I'm 16 and play as an on-baller. My training goal is to become more powerful through my lower and upper body. What exercises should I be doing in the gym? Yeah, great question, Will, and this is quite a common one uh, that we get. Uh, Power is a really, really important 
aspect of the game, um, particularly for your first three steps and your ability to be able to create space, both from a strength in the contest point of view, like the fend-off, the Dusty Martin, or just simply your speed and agility being able to break away. So uh, exercises that we want to try and do, we want to try and make sure we lift with good technique. We want to lift heavy at least once a week with your lower and upper body. So I think a box squat, a deadlift, trap bar deadlift, a bench press would be some good examples. Weighted chin-ups would be another example. So where you're working on your maximum strength, how much force you can produce. And then we want to try and work on your power. Um, so think moving light objects fast. So that might be your body weight, like a box jump, broad jump, or it could be like a uh, medicine ball, um, a, a bench press, Smith machine throws. Um, so we're really focusing on the velocity of the movement rather than the weight. Um, and ultimately, as the stronger you get, uh, you'll be able to lift relative to your strength, you'll be able to lift higher weights. Um, so at the start, let's say you can bench press 100 kilos, your power training might be around 50 kilos because you can move that. Research shows around one meters per second is good for a power stimulus. So that's 50 kilos, but obviously as your strength goes up, 120 kilos, you're now doing power training at 60 kilos. Um, so it's all relative to your strength levels, but making sure you understand um, the the bang for buck exercises are your squat, your deadlift, bench press, and, and chin-ups. Um, that would be the main exercises I would focus on. Don't get too fancy with it. Um, and then in terms of your, your power as well, because you mentioned that lower, lower body power, making sure you're doing acceleration work, um, you know, your first three steps, and so make sure your first three steps, you've got that intent to move as fast as possible. You're doing sprinting training, so you're moving at above 90% of your max velocity at least once a week. And that would be really, really important from a speed point of view. So if you get the strength covered, heavy lifting, you do the power stuff, move light things fast in the gym, and then you do your speed and acceleration workout on the field, you'll be in a really good place, mate. Hopefully that helps, Will. Gary Ferraro has written, how do you become a Prepare Like a Pro ambassador? Uh, so that's something where we hand select players that are in their draft year um, and they've made the All-Australian squads so or have typically one in each state. So like Nick Dacos was doing some training with me in Melbourne. Um, we had Josh Fay from New South Wales, uh, Jacob Van Ruin, um, Perth, and then Cooper Murley in Adelaide, and then Austin Harris in Brisbane. So once those guys are drafted, and then we'll be reaching out, and once the All-Australian squad is selected for the 2022, we'll be selecting a new bunch of athletes. And basically the ambassador program is something that we do where we service the athletes for their draft year for free and help them out in any way that we can um, to make sure that they're physically in great shape for the combine and they're well prepared for their draft year in terms of game performance. And our last question is from Sarah Phillips. How important is it to recover? What should I be doing as a footballer? Recovery is paramount and this is a great time in the off-season, pre-season. Um, we're in late November to experiment um, it's also a transition stage for a lot of footballers going from off season now to returning to your club um, so that change in load uh, is a good time to focus on recovery because your, your body is absorbing now the increase of kicking loads increase of agility the change of direction work so your quads and your groins are doing a lot a lot more work uh, potentially if you haven't been doing much sprint training you might be getting exposed to some higher speeds as well um, so and potentially higher volumes as well if you haven't been doing a big off-season running program. So um, to allow your body to absorb that new training stress, we want to make sure we're focusing time on recovery. Now, Olympic athletes will typically do the amount of work they do in the gym and on the field working out, they'll equal with working in their recovery. So if you think one-to-one, -one, so if you've spent an hour working out, um, improving your physical capacity, then you want to try and find an hour of working in that's quite extreme, so that's for the top end of, for the pros. Um, if you can try and get to at least 25% of that to start with, that would be a great start. So if you think of how much, how many hours you're working out during the week, try and break that down and do a quarter, start with a quarter of working in recovery, and that can be meditation, it can be ice baths, sauna, mobility, Pilates, yoga, uh, anything that you feel good after it mentally and physically. You feel better after the exercise than you did before. This is actually a subject I've just presented on with our athletes every Sunday. I catch up with them at 5 p.m. Um, then, yeah, that that's a good sign that you're, you, you're doing good recovery. And like I said before, it's very individual. So practice different methods. Try different things. Speak to athletes. See what works for them. Try it on yourself. Uh, and if you feel better after it, 
um, then you're probably on a good thing. You can use objective data to help you measure how successful that session was. Uh, is contrast recovery more effective for you than just doing one form of um, temperature work? So like going from an ice bath to a spa opposed to just being in, the, in a sauna, for example. You could use heart rate variability um, to see your readiness scale before the recovery and then test your heart rate variability after it and hopefully it's higher. Uh, but how much higher would be one way that you can measure um, the effectiveness of that recovery method. Thank you, guys. Thanks for tuning into our live segment. And um, remember, we've got uh, two live episodes this week, one with Matthew McGregor, the AFL Player Association Sports Psychologist, on Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. And we have Rebecca Alcock at Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. who's just recently finished up at the Melbourne Football Club and she's completed a PhD on nutrition. She's a sports dietitian. So to listen to those live chats, you must subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll be notified. We've also got plenty of awesome performance-based exercises for those that are interested. Um, like Will's question was about improving your power. On our YouTube channel, we have a whole playlist of exercises dedicated to power training. Um, so head over to our YouTube channel, click the subscribe, and you'll be notified when we next go live. And then for the podcast, we have Michael Riscatelli on Tuesday. We have our Get Better Plan on Wednesday, and then we have Tim Schmidt on Friday. So massive week on the Propel Like a Pro live chat show. Looking forward to it. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Cheers.